the return difference transfer function and the vector margin can help us avoid being misled by gain and phase margin when evaluating the robustness of closed loop systems. Here's our loop gain from before. Gain margin is good and phase margin is also good for this loop gain. But there's a bulge that comes very close to the critical point and that nearness is missed by classical gain and phase margins. where gain and phase margins are only evaluated at two particular frequencies. There's an intermediate frequency between the loop gain crossover and the phase crossover, where again, the loop gain comes very close to the critical point. So stability margins, that is gain and phase margins, don't always capture nearness to the critical point. As we did in the last video, we can draw a phaser to the loop gain where it comes close to minus one then by inspection, determine phase and gain that bring that loop gain to the critical point. So this is instability caused by simultaneous gain and phase disturbances. And these disturbances are less than the gain and phase margin. This motivates the need for a robustness metric that captures the nearness of the loop gain to the critical point. So clearly, this distance can be captured by a new phaser starting at the critical point. We're going to denote it chi of j omega. And note that we've just created a triangle between the minus one vector, chi, and the loop gain. So we can solve for chi. And then writing out the loop gain as minus u out over u in, we obtain another interpretation for the transfer function chi of j omega. Its input is the control into the loop that's broken at the plant input, and the output of chi is the difference between what was input and what is returned or output. So in summary, this new variable chi is called the return difference transfer function. And it's key to determining the robustness metric we're introducing here, vector margin. When we evaluate the return difference, it's as if we're evaluating chi at a sequence of frequencies, just going up along the loop gain like that, eventually coming to a value of one in magnitude as frequency increases. If we were to plot this out, the, the magnitude of chi versus frequency on a log scale. Put a unit disk around the critical point for reference here. Outside that unit disk, the magnitude of the return difference is greater than one. So as we have it drawn, roughly at about omega-1 is when
we have unit magnitude of the return difference. But then we go inside of that disk and the loop gain approaches the critical point, reaches a minimum, and then after that minimum increases again, approaching one as frequency increases. We can pick off that minimum value. That's at an intermediate frequency between the loop gain crossover and the phase crossover frequency. And that minimum value of return difference is called the vector margin. So vector margin is the closest point of approach of the loop gain to the critical point. A gain and phase margin just look at two particular points on the loop gain and how close it gets to the critical point. Vector margin says what's the closest over a range of frequencies of interest that the loop gain gets to the critical point. So rules of thumb, and these vary by the class of system being controlled, but it's reasonable to say at least six decibels of gain margin and at least 30 degrees of phase. For vector margin, uh, a reasonable threshold is 0 0.5. It's, notice not on a dB scale. So to interpret this, put the half disk around the critical point. That represents that vector margin magnitude. The loop gains will not enter that disk. And then this implies gain and phase margins also. So if we ensure vector margin of at least a half, then what's the implied gain and phase margin? So there's one over our gain margin which has to be less than or equal to 0 0.5 and therefore is greater than or equal to 2, the gain margin. To determine the phase margin, we'll just construct an isosceles triangle there. 1, 1, and then this leg is uh, half. Cut that in half and you have a quarter. And we have a right triangle we can evaluate half of the phase margin from. So sine of theta star over 2 is just a quarter. Solving for theta star. And get 29 degrees. So having a vector margin of greater than or equal to a half also turns out to give us the desired gain margin and something very close at least to the phase margin. But the real important point about vector margin is that it's capturing nearness to the critical point that gain margin and phase margin do not capture. So when we evaluate the robustness of systems using the loop gain, it's always good to not only compute gain in phase margin, but also vector margin. We should not throw away gain in phase margin at this point just because vector margin as a single quantity implies that roughly gain and phase margins are met here. The reason is that when we have multiple margins, vector margin may only pick out one of them. So having gain margin and phase margin evaluated gives us a more complete picture of the robustness of our system and situations where we could go unstable. We'll discuss these multiple margins in the next video.